Okay, one of the scariest events of the Cold War is in fact the Cuban Missile Crisis, which if you look at the name, there's a couple things that we can take out of this. Obviously, crisis could be... That's my scared face, my oh no face, right? So we know that the Cuban Missile Crisis was definitely some kind of emergency, and we can also gather that it has something to do with Cuba, which it does, look at that. Okay, so if we start focusing on ge geography, right, where are we talking about? So here's the United States, here's Florida down here. Okay, you'll notice that Cuba is roughly 90 miles away from the United States. This is Cuba here, and there's a reason why Cuba is in red in this map. I told you during the Cold War, anything that's red, we technically or we tend to associate with communism and the Soviet Union, right? And the same holds true for Cuba here. All right, so just a quick little background. All right, Cuba, we said a small island, roughly 90 miles off the coast. You should remember, right, uh, the Spanish-American War. Remember remember the main? Remember we were looking at the sinking? Of, we, that's not how you spell remember. Remember the main. That was the battleship that exploded in Havana Harbor and pretty much forced the United States to get involved in the Spanish-American War, right? We then take control of Cuba during the turn of the century, the late 1800s, early 1900s. We set up the military base, lots of trade. It becomes a very famous tourist attraction. But in 1959, and I'm switching colors for a reason, in 1959, Fidel Castro is going to overthrow the Cuban government, all right, and establishes a communist state, which then puts... Uh, puts Cuba directly on the radar of the United States because there is now a, a communist nation right right next to the United States, right? And some of the things that Castro does, right, he takes over U.S. businesses, basically forces any Americans in Cuba to leave, right? And then in response, the United States is going to break off diplomatic uh, relations. We're also going to set up an embargo where we don't do any trade at all with Cuba, right? Uh, in 1961, this is the biggie, all right, the CIA, the Central Intelligence Agency, for those of you that aren't into the video games and the movie thing, right, is going to tr attempt to overthrow Castro, right, with a Bay of Pigs invasion, where we basically train uh, over a thousand Cuban refugees, right, give them weapons, give them training, and send them back to Cuba to try and get rid of Fidel Castro. It's ultimately going to fail, right, it's going to be a massive embarrassment for the CIA, the U.S. government and also the president at the time, JFK. Even though he wasn't president when it was planned, okay, he was president when it was uh, given the order to go. So in response to this attempted overthrow or this attempted invasion, all right, the USSR, sorry, the R got cut off. The USSR is going to start sending missiles to Cuba, all right? Kind of starts off as just sending troops and personnel, right? Then the, they, the Soviet Union starts sending nuclear missiles, which pretty much now starts freaking out the United States, right? Even though we actually had missiles all throughout Europe aimed at the Soviet Union. But now the Soviet Union is sending missiles into the Western Hemisphere, which the United States pretty much up to that point considered to be their own backyard. All right, so why would the Soviet Union do this? All right, obviously, space race, or excuse me, obviously, Cold War, competition, right? Who can have the most amount of power, the most amount of influence, things like that. Let's get this stuff out of the way. All right, but first things first, switch my colors again, is Cuba is a communist nation, right? So the, anything that the Soviet Union could do to help Cuba, it's going to do. Because remember, the goal of communism is to spread around the world, all right? It's the only way it's going to be successful is if everybody, right, is going to be uh, communist, all right? And it was a launch base. The closer we are, that's what this map down here, okay? If they put missiles in Cuba, you can see all of these major cities, including Washington, D.C., would be within range of most of their missiles. <clears throat> all right, new leader, JFK to the Cold War, Nikita Khrushchev, who is right here with Fidel Castro. He pretty much saw this as his opportunity to maybe bully JFK or at least, you know, get the upper hand, show JFK that he's in charge, right? But ultimately, it's going to come down to, right, can we use this as almost like a chess match to try and force the United States to give up some concessions that we want, all right? So the U.S. is going to discover these missiles in Cuba in early October 1962, all right, U-2 spy planes. 
right, are going to take high resolution photos like this, right, of all these missile sites being put into operation. Right now, we have spies, they have spies, right, so we know what their missiles look like. So the, the CIA could basically tell, right, from the photographs that these missiles were, in fact, offensive, right, meaning they would be used for attack and not defensive or being used to defend Cuba. Um, so they're, they're, the time frame kind of became put on that these missile sites would be operational in seven days. So it pretty much put the United States in a spot where we had to do something about these missiles. Because if we didn't do anything, the Soviet Union would have had all of these nuclear missiles within range of the United States, the major cities in the United States, which ultimately they could have launched whenever they wanted. All right. So now it's kind of like the government is in high alert to try and do something about these missile sites. And then they find out that there are even more missiles coming to Cuba as well. All right, so here would just be another picture. All right, you can see there are two, uh, two different abbreviations, MRBM and IRBM. All right, the MRBMs are medium range, uh, and the IRBMs are intercontinental. Um, and if you look, the IRBMs are going to pretty much be able to hit any city in the United States, except for like Portland and Seattle. Right, but when you're looking at major cities, you've got Los Angeles, you've got Dallas, you've got DC, Atlanta, Chicago, Boston, right? They're all within range of, uh, of these Soviet missiles in Cuba. All right, so it pretty much comes down to you know, these five options that the United States has. Okay? First one is do nothing. That's not an option because then you're going to let the Soviet Union do whatever they want to do. Right? And, and you know, the United States isn't really going to have the strength, so it's kind of out of a principle thing. We had to do something about these missiles. Right? So the second option that comes to the table is to go to the United Nations. And one of the things that Kennedy says here is that if we wait for the UN to do something, those missiles are going to be operational. Right? So that, that's not going to work for us. Right? A naval blockade, that's a possibility. All right? Let's keep any more missiles from coming. Right? A blockade is where you block all right, ships from coming into a particular harbor, so they're going to stop those other 20 Soviet ships. All right, a strategic airstrike, right, where we launch bombers and fighter pilot, fighter planes to just bomb the missile sites themselves. All right, and then a full invasion of Cuba. Now these two are strongly considered, but are ultimately taken off the table, right, because it would lead to Soviet deaths. Right now, basically, because they have Soviet personnel and Soviet soldiers there helping put the missiles in place, right? The U.S. felt that if they went ahead with those two options, we would have killed Soviet soldiers, which would have been an act of war. The Soviet Union would have then responded, which then would have led us to, and here's my famous mushroom cloud again, right? Nuclear war, right? The end of the war, end of the world as we know it. All right. So we got really kind of just that one option on the table. All right, the U.S. sets up a blockade, which would be this purple line right here. All right, we basically tell the, the Soviet Union, right, you are not allowed to send any more missiles to the United States. Now, you have to remember that while, right up until this point, the American people had no idea what was going on, right? It was a totally different time than today. There was no Twitter or social media, right? The, the government was basically able to keep this all secret right up until this point where the president goes onto the news stations, Right, and he gives a, you know, the, I don't want to say a press conference, but gives more of a speech uh, to the American people where he explains to them what's going on. Right, so now we got this blockade going, and we got these Soviet ships that are still heading full steam towards, towards Cuba with nuclear missiles. Right, and the United States pretty much told them, you are not allowed to send uh, those, those missiles to Cuba. And you can see the map is showing us missile sites that are already set up and ready to go. We got some MRBMs. Some IRBMs, remember the IRBMs are the ones that could hit any city in the United States, except for Seattle or Portland, right? So now it comes down to what happens next, right? These ships are coming, and the United States has threatened to use force to stop them, all right? A uh, famous cartoon here, you can see here's Khrushchev and Kennedy, right? And this monster trying to get out would be nuclear war, right? So that's basically those two uh, understanding that nuclear war is imminent. Um, so really the question becomes what happens next and we're going to focus on that in class.